Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ken from JetPay. Uh, I just wanted to do a second tutorial on how to register, create, and activate a JetPay. This is once you have already signed up to the service and activated the email link, clicked on the email link to activate your email, and then uh, you purchase a subscription as I showed in the first video tutorial. I'll leave a link to that video tutorial in the description. So now you're a logged in paid member and you're ready to create and activate your first jet pay. And there's three steps. And I'm going to go through that now. So now I've logged in and I've paid for a subscription so I can access the dashboard. I'm going to go through this as if I were just a member doing exactly what you would be doing. All right. So you're in the dashboard. You want to create your first jet pay. First thing you have to do is register your info. This is a one time thing. You only register once and then you can create JetPay 1 and JetPay 2 and activate them both. So I'm going to register my username and email according to the directions on this page. For my username, it'll be Ken. I have entered my email. I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to show my password either and I'm not going to show my PIN. Uh, I just entered a password it can be the same as the password you signed up to the service with, or it can be different. Just on this page, you can, if you follow the directions, it says registration password, and it can be different from your login if you, if you choose. And then just a four-digit PIN, something is easy for you to remember. I've entered mine, and uh, that's sensitive information, so I'm not going to show it. I'm just going to take you through the four steps. This whole step is required to be able to, as I said, to be able to create and activate JetPays. So I'm going to register my user info. I've entered everything I was supposed to enter. I'm going to click register and it says success. User Ken has been registered at jetpay.cloud. You know, you can read the rest. And now if, if I want to see those results, I would refresh this page and a table will come up. I'll show it to you. I'll just, when I, when I do the editing, I'll just block out the sensitive information. So I'm going to refresh this page right now. Before I return to dashboard, I'm going to refresh it and have a look at it and make sure uh, it's coming back the way I input it on the page before. And from what I can see, it is. Uh, I've blocked out my email, my password, and my PIN naturally. But uh, if you refresh, you get a table. So before you just go back to dashboard, hit the refresh and have a look and make sure it's what you want. Your email is right and everything. If you're using your phone, you might have made a typo. It's real easy to mess up, as we all know, when you're using a mobile device. All right, so everything's looking the way I want it to look. My info is registered, so now I can return to the dashboard. That username and email is, is the same username that you signed on to the service with and the same email that you signed on to the service with. All right, so step one is finished. Uh, remember, right here, if you look at the dashboard, it's a three-step process. Register, create, and activate. All right, so the registration step is done. So let's go ahead and create our first JetPay. Okay, so you enter your account username. You enter your account email address. I've blocked mine out. Now I'm going to create a jet pay. Just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to make something up that's easy to remember. Okay, so I, I'm going to create demo swipe jet pay dot cloud. All right, I've entered that in. Then I have Coinbase open. So hopefully it hasn't uh, timed out on me. You go to Coinbase and you have XRP. So you have an XRP wallet there. Then this is what you're making your jet pay for. And this is this example is good because these Coinbase wallets, these exchange wallets, have destination tags. So this JetPay is going to be created with a destination tag. All right, so let's go to XRP, view asset. We're in the wallet screen now. And when you go to wallet, you hit receive. And right here, this is what you want. And you know it has a destination tag because there's one showing. Anytime you're making a JetPay for a wallet, and you open the receive page because that's what you're going to the receive info is what you're going to assign the jet pay to. If you see in the receive info a XRP tag, that's a destination tag. If you see one, it's required, no matter what platform you're using. It's always the case on an exchange, but it may be some other platform, some mobile app you have. If there's a destination tag there, make sure you include it when you when you create your jet pay. And the way to include it is not to try to copy it by hand. You just copy and paste, all right? So my address is copied. I go back, and the address has been pasted in, okay? Same step for the destination tag. I copy the destination tag. Go back to the other tab that I have open. This is why it's best to do this on a desktop or a laptop, because you can have two tabs open side by side, and really it just makes the process much more user-friendly. 
All right, so now I go to the destination tag field. And I've copied in my destination tag as well. Then I look over everything one more time just to be sure. Username is right. Email is right. Demo swipe jetpay.cloud. That's what I want to use. And I have copied my XRP wallet address and I've copied the destination tag, right? Right from the exchange, the information that they gave me. I've looked over the information. When all required fields are filled in, click create jetpay one. For destination tag, it says, if the wallet has a destination tag, copy and paste it in, otherwise leave blank. And as I said before, this is a case where this wallet has a destination tag. It happens to be a wallet that's on an exchange and rule of thumb, anytime you have an XRP wallet on a crypto exchange, it's always gonna have a destination tag because they only have one XRP wallet address that they use to receive XRP. And the way they send people their XRP to the individual re recipients is by way of the destination tag. That's how they identify you. So if the destination tag is missing, you're not gonna get your XRP. And we have links on the site. There's a page right here in about destination tags. And there's a paragraph that tells you their default policy across all exchanges that I've looked at is if your destination tag is missing, you're not getting your XRP. And in the case of a jet pay, if you leave it out, it's gonna be missing every time you use the jet pay. This is why you need to know that if your wallet has a destination tag associated with it, like this one does, all right, it must be included, okay? If you, and, and by copying and pasting, you know you're gonna get it right. You're not doing it manually, so you don't run the risk of some type of you know, error, manual error. If you copy and paste and follow best practices, you'll be fine, okay? So here we are, all the information that's required is filled in. Destination tag is included, it's required in this case. So I'll click create jet pay one. All right, and this is the message you get, success. Your first jet pay has been recorded at jetpay.cloud. And again, if you refresh the page, you'll see the info. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit refresh. And there it is, demo swipe jetpay.cloud. It's on the XRPL network. There's my wallet address, that's, a, that's Coinbase's main wallet address. And there's my destination tag. And by the way, this is public information. Anytime I want to receive a payment, I would have to give somebody this information. When you make jet pays, you're dealing with the public facing side of the wallet. So, you know, it's not gonna, you can't get hacked with this information right here. I can have this information sitting on YouTube and really all somebody can use it for is to send me XRP. All right, so those of you who are like, well, why is he showing his wallet? Can't, you know, in this case, this is the public facing side. And if I were not using a jet pay, I would have to give out this information anyway. And then as you're gonna see later on, you can go right on XRP scan and look it up. If I gave somebody demo swipe jetpay.cloud, they could go right on PayString Validator, type it in and look it up and get this information anyway. So this is public facing information, all right? And what a jet pay does, this right here, the whole point of making a jet pay is that jet pay enables you to not have to give out this long, complex wallet address, right? And this long destination tag, it's anywhere from eight to 10 numbers. In this case, it's 10. That's a lot. It's so much easier to just say, Mike swipe jet pay dot cloud. All right. So a table pops up and shows you your information. Step two, create is done. All right, step one is register. We only do that once. Step two is create, done. We return to dashboard. Now that we've refreshed this screen, first we saw success in the creation. We refreshed and we got the table. And now you don't have to, but you should refresh. Have a look at the table. Make sure before you activate this jet pay, you want to double check and make sure, and you can go, okay, wallet address, and then you can go back to Coinbase and make sure the wallet address is the same. And then you can do the same with the jet destination tag. But, you know, when you copy and paste, that chance for error is, is eliminated. Okay, so now we'll return to dashboard. All right, so we've done step one, register. We've created JetPay1. I'm not going to do JetPay2 right now because this is all I really need to do. JetPay2 is the same thing. After we activate this guy, when you want to do JetPay2, then you, then you go back, create again, and activate JetPay2 separately. All right, and if JetPay2's wallet has no destination tag, then in this field, in the creation step, if the wallet you're creating has no destination tag, then you leave it blank. But if you see a destination tag there in that information they give you, like in this case, if you see one, it is absolutely mandatory 
that you include it, whether you're using a JetPay or not. If you want somebody to send you XRP to this Coinbase wallet, you need, I need to have that destination tag if I want to receive XRP. If I try to send XRP to myself and I just put the address, it'll go to Coinbase and I will never get it in my account. All right? You must have that destination tag. I can't emphasize that enough. All right. So we've done that. Now, going back to the dashboard, I just wanted to reemphasize the importance of a destination tag. It's not that, you know, anything's going to happen if you include it. It's, it's, not, it's not flawed technology. You know, there's been some bad press surrounding destination tags and the drama that people have been through because they've, you know, not really understood what destination tags are about. And that's why I've explained them. Coinbase has most exchanges have one main wallet and they use the destination tag to route your XRP to where it's supposed to go. If the destination tag is missing, it's like not having a zip code and sending a letter internationally trying to get, you know, from your buddy in Japan, trying to mail something to you in the United States with no zip code on it, there was a time when it would not arrive. Maybe it will these days, but I remember if the zip code, was, they used to have commercials on television, no, no zip code, no letter. All right, so same kind of thing. Okay, so we'll activate now. All right, so I'm gonna fill in the same information. Now in this case, you don't need your, you don't need your email anymore. You just need your username that you signed up with, the jet pay that you just made, Right? And this is why you want to do them one by one. Don't, do, don't create two of them and then activate them uh, in tandem. I would create one, focus on that information, activate that one, then test it and make sure it's working properly. Then when all of that's done, go back, create the second one, pay attention to that, focus on that, and then go through the steps. Do them one at a time. This way you, can't, you, you, you don't get confused. People have distractions in their lives and things like that. This is something you want to focus on and do properly. If you do it one time, you got to get it right. All right. Okay. So uh, the fields you fill in are your username, the jet pay you just created in step two. Then you go back to the exchange. Now, this is a wallet that must have a destination tag. So I'll go right back to the Coinbase tab and I'll do the same copy and paste steps. Okay. Here's the, I'll copy and paste the wallet address. It says copied. I go back here. and I've copied in the wallet. I go back to the Coinbase tab, copy the destination tag. I go back to the activate JetPay tab and I paste in the destination tag. Same wallet, same address, same destination tag. I have not changed the tab, so I know it's the same and I can verify it by saying, okay, 2866451566. 2866451566. Okay. Uh, very important that this activate information matches that create information. Okay. So you want to continue to copy and paste until you get through all three steps. This is to create a jet pay. This is step three. Step one, we registered. Step two, we did creation. We got success. We refreshed the screen. We looked at the info. Step three now, we create, and in the creation step, the email is not necessary. All right, username, JetPay is, oh, I didn't include the JetPay yet. Okay, I, had, I skipped the JetPay a, a second ago. So in Activate, the four fields are username, the JetPay you created, your XRP address, and the destination tag if it's required. In this case, it is. All right, so we're about to finish step three. So this is what happens when you get to the third step and you activate a JetPay. Here's what you see. Again, when all required fields are filled in, click activate. You look it over one last time, make sure everything's right, because you only need to do this one time, so you want to get it right. You get this right, you don't have to ever worry about your XRP address or your destination tag anymore. All you have to do is give out demo swipe jetpay.cloud. So let's activate this one. All right, so here it is. For username Ken, here is your jetpay activation info. Jetpay demo swipe jetpay.cloud is created. It's active on the PayString network says your JetPay status is shown on the lines above. All right, uh, so it's active. This JetPay is working. Right now, it could be used. Now, I just wanna talk about a couple of things. Now, I'm gonna refresh this page. Now, this JetPay has already been activated on the network. So when I refresh this page, it's gonna treat it like you're activating that again. It's already active and it's gonna give me this 409 error. That's what a 409 error means. It means your JetPay is already active 
right? And you can see that sometimes where you might just want to go log into your account. This is a great way to check your JetPay. You go in your account, you, you, you go to the activate screen, and you type in your username, your JetPay, the uh, wallet address, and the uh, destination tag, if there is one, and you hit activate. If you get this, it means you're turning it on for the first time. And you, maybe you created it two months ago, and we did a reboot. We put the server down, and we put it back up. And when we do that, the JetPays go dark. So in that case, if you were reactivating a JetPay, you would also see created for the first time, right? Because you're creating it again. The, the, it got wiped off the network when we rebooted the server. But you don't have to, you don't have to register and, and, and do the create step. This created here is not the same as create JetPay 1. We're on the activate page right now. I know it's a little confusing, but when you get on this activate step, this word creative has nothing to do with create JetPay 1 or create JetPay 2. This created means it's created on the PayString network. So when you activate, you'll see creative, but that's why this is in green, to show you active on the PayString network. If there were an error in this creation, you wouldn't see this. But I'm saying all of this to let you know, this is a successful activated JetPay. And when I refresh, you're going to see a 409 error because it's going to be showing you it's good already. All right. That's what the 409 error means. If you see a 404 error, that means your JetPay did not hit the system. 404, no good. OK. And you would probably have to send support and email. Just go to the contact support tab and send us an email and let us know what the situation is and we will resolve it for you. All right. So. Uh, this is what it looks like when you create a fresh JetPay. If I refresh the screen now, you would see this. Status code 409, error conflict. And they give you a message. There already exists a user with the provided pay ID. Now, see, that is coming from the pay ID server, but, you know, they, they probably will fix that. It's, uh, that's a branding thing. Uh, that pay ID is just what? Jet, what PayString used to call themselves. Uh, they used to call themselves PayID and they had to change themselves to PayString. So don't worry about that. It's the same technology. It's just a different name. And they've had to do a lot of typing and a lot of coding. And that right there is an oversight on their part. I'll shoot them out a message and let them know, see if you can change that. Uh, let me take a screenshot of that. We have no control over that at JetPay. That's coming from the main server software that is maintained by, by paystring.org. So that information, that, that's coming right off the PayString server. And it should not say pay ID anymore. It should say PayString. So I'll, I'll shoot them a message and let them know. Um, but anyway, active on the PayString network. First time we saw it fresh. Now this time, since we refreshed the screen, you're getting a 409 error. I'm just trying to emphasize to you, 409 errors are not a bad thing when you're activating a JetPay. They're a good thing. It means you're good to go. Okay, it just means you, you, you check the same thing twice. All right, and that's it. This video is about how to register your user info, create a JetPay, and activate it. Happy to be your PayString provider. To those of you who have signed up already, thank you very much. We appreciate you. If you're thinking about signing up, join us. You can't go wrong. Two JetPays for $14.99. That comes out to $7.50 a JetPay, which is two cents a day. All right? If you like this content, please like and subscribe. This is Ken from JetPay. Take care, everybody. See you next time.